David. What's up, man? Good to see you, brother. How you doing? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Great to see you. Yeah. Have a seat. Nine years. Yeah. Wow, you're old. Nine years. Nine you remember years. Remember when I was that old vet, I crusty do. old vet? Yeah, and you were the grumpy. young buck, the young, fresh, spry, spry rookie, trying to give me a stinger and punch me on Fridays. <laughs> now you're now you're the old guy. Now you're the one trying to not get hit on a Friday. Yeah, you know it's funny how how it changes, <laughs> man. And it you know, changes quickly. It does. The what it, the days are long, the years are fast. That's right. Now you. Now you got the kiddo, you got the wife, you got the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's wild coming into the league. You know, I was living by myself, up here by myself. My wife hadn't come up yet. and We'd get done with practice and, and you know, guys like you, Seabass, Nate, you know, yeah. going home to be dads, yeah. be with their be husbands and- Fold the laundry. Yeah, you know, and I was like, well, so what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing after, you know? And, it's funny now looking back, you know, I'm kind of in that role of watching some of the young guys come in and they, you know, they're riding together in the mornings and things like that. So um, it's funny how the, the roles have flipped. Yes, they have. Now, just talking about mental health and, and the priority of mental health, can you just talk to me a little, little bit about how you you know, maybe approach your own mental health and dealing with that with your family and kids and football yeah. and wife and all those things. I think, you know, it's always hard and it's stuff people don't want to talk about. You know, people mm -hmm. don't want to talk about it a lot of times, especially a football player, right? We're supposed to be, you know, these tough, macho. Well, men in general feel men like, in you general, know, we yeah. take everything, put it on our shoulders, yeah. we can handle it, we'll just keep going. And I think, you know, sometimes, you know, if you, tend to bury things and bury things and you think you're okay, that sometimes leads to bigger problems, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, the biggest thing I think you can do is if something's bothering you, try to talk about it. And, yep. and have somebody you can talk about it to, whether it's a friend, your parents, you know, your wife, whoever it may be. And, um, you know, I think that's a, you know, it's a big thing and, and it's stuff that now I guess I'm, I think back growing up, like there was, it wasn't talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't stressed or, or, you know, you got a lot of people. There's no emphasis yeah, on you've got, that. You've got yeah. a lot of people talking about this kind of stuff now, which I think is good. And, it, and I think, you know, if I was younger, having somebody that I looked up to or talk about this stuff, yeah. you know, would have been maybe changed, you know, how I dealt with things and how I had to learn things the hard way on how, how to deal with things and things like that. So, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is just trying to, if something, you know, is bothering me, if something's, you know, I try to talk about it. A lot of times, if you keep stuff in, it festers and festers and manifests as a way, you know, in ways you don't want to. And then in, inside the locker room, as a leader, as a yeah. captain, you know, that's another point of emphasis. I, I think now, especially, mm -hmm in NFL teams, you know, men mental health is being talked about more, you know, as a leader, what would you say to some guys like in the locker room if, if they're dealing with anything? I mean, I think one, you know, we have a lot of resources, Yeah. right? And I think that's, that's a huge thing to begin with. And whether that resource is, you know, someone on the team, um, a chaplain we have, other guys on the team, because other guys maybe have gone through things that guys are dealing with, right? Yep. And, and sometimes talking to your peers can be a huge, you know, outlet. And I think if you want to try to lead guys and things like that, you have to know kind of what makes them tick. And if a guy's going through something, maybe you need to handle it a different way than you know, someone that's not like, mm. and you gotta, you gotta kind of know that and know how guys operate and, or try to at least learning your teammates. And I think that's just part of being a good teammate, right? And there's a lot of life that goes on outside the building, right? Yep. And people's kids get sick and families get sick and they're dealing with other things that, you know, are going on that are everyday life things. But sometimes, you know, we try not to address them in a football locker room, you know, and I think it's important to do that. Yeah, and, you know, coming from a former player, I know current players in this environment that we're at right now, I think it's important everybody speaks up and 
it just becomes an open ear to somebody that needs to talk or needs to have conversations uh -huh. to get things off their chest. You know, it's very important to have those mentors, the guys that you look up to, the leaders, mm -hmm. even outside the locker room. You, you think about all these other, you know, entities and businesses that they need to have the same mindset as, as you have inside this team. Yeah. You know, there's other teams that have to have that as well. So now we're gonna transition to these conversation cards. They're Optum conversation cards. And this is what it is, okay? So you have cards there, I have cards here. All right. And I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. These lovely Optum cards here. Nice conversation starters. David, which emoji describes your mood today? Yeah, I didn't get to I didn't get to see my son yesterday because of a long work day and stuff like that. So pretty excited to get home and, and play so with it's them. The smiley face? Yeah, like our uh, the big cheese face? The big cheese face. The big yeah, smile, like, like the all. big teeth. Not like a okay. soft smile, big, big, the big teeth all smile, right. everything. All right. What do you got for me? All right. Now, not, don't be, you know, <laughs> what's your favorite meal and why? Oh, favorite meal? Wow, that's really tough. I mean, there's nothing like a great Italian meal, mm. like spaghetti and meatball or yeah. a good lasagna. Chicken parm. Ooh, chicken parm. Big so chicken I'm parm. So yeah. I'm a big Italian meal fan when it comes to like the authentic go down there to down to boston you go get yourself some good italian go in the north end you go to some of those nice spots can't go wrong with that I agree can't go wrong all right here's yours you're stranded on an island who do you text first and why i gotta text my wife that's uh, yeah that's big yeah communication you gotta yeah you, gotta, you know because one she probably already knows I'm there because she's probably looking at my location. Yeah. <laughs> but, yep. yeah, I text her, you know, let her know I'm on this island. I'm okay. I'm probably having fun on the island. Yeah. Probably there's probably a lot of fish. I could probably be doing some fishing and things like that. It's but like castaway? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, Figure I, it out? Yeah, you figure it out. All, All right. right. What's, what's the next one? What do you do when you can't sleep at night? So usually... If I do get up too early and I can't go back to bed, That's I'll go my work issue. out. Uh, I'll go work out. So like, I think the other day I woke up at four and I was like, yeah, if I go back to bed, it's gonna screw, screw up my day. Yeah, you're gonna party bad. here. So I might as well just go. So I just got dressed, left the house, went and worked out. I've done that before. Sometimes I change, change locations. Yeah, I might go hit the couch. Just go do something else. It go, up. go downstairs, watch, watch some TV yeah. or something. What is one thing you hope to accomplish in a few years? Oh man, um, I haven't finished my degree. Okay. I was gonna go back and then we were playing in Super Bowls and doing That's a tough. lot of that. And yeah. I think it's important just to say something I did. You know, how can I stress that to my kids if I haven't followed through with my bargain yet? So I'd hopefully try to get that done, you know, here in the next couple of years. And um, yeah, I think that would be one for me. It's a good one. Ooh, this would be a bad one for me. What's one habit you wish you could break? I'm kind of sloppy. I wish I was a little more neater. Yes, I wish I was a little bit more organized when it came to just every aspect of the, the garage, <laughs> my truck, uh, closet, putting, closet, putting the bill. So like, I'll take the, I'll get the mail and I'll go through it and I'll be like, eh, I don't need this. And I'll throw these somewhere and I'll be like, where yeah. the heck did I put that bill that I need to pay? Yeah. Cause it's not going away. Yeah. So better organizational skills yeah. would help me in my everyday life. I try to be organized. And it's, just... <laughs> it's not easy. Why do you think you are a good friend? Ooh, good question. Um, yeah, I think I care about my friends. You know, I just genuinely care for them. I think me and my wife are both, um, we have a really good group of friends we grew up with, our high school friends. Talk to probably three or four buddies on the phone every week, at least mm -hmm. once a week, you know, and just, it could be for five minutes, it could be for 30 minutes, you know, and, um, but just genuinely care about them. And I think, you know, that's something I think is important. Just try to be, and especially as you get older, right? You know, I think mm -hmm. it's easier when you're in school together all the time and hanging out all the time. And, you know, now they're still, all of them are still in Georgia for the most part. And I'm 
in New England. So we don't get to see each other. You know, we both have families, all have families. So, you know, I think you just try to be intentional uh, with your friends and, and nurturing those friendships. What was the last book, song, or movie that made you feel something? The Kelsey documentary. I me and my watched wife watched it. it. And I, at the end, it kind of got me a little bit because yeah. Yeah. he's talking about football and, you know, he doesn't, there's nothing that'll give you that feeling yeah. that football gives you no matter what you do. And it's true because I've been out. So I've been out of football for a long time now. So I know that no matter what you do, you're never, you're never going to feel that same feeling. The fulfillment. That fulfillment feeling. So that's the hardest aspect. And that when I was watching it, it got me a little emotional. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. I mean, it, got, it was got me a little emotional. I thought, so I thought he did a good job with that. And, yeah. And the ending, you know, I mean, I'm obviously fortunate enough to still do it, but yeah. you know, a lot closer to the end than the beginning. And you think about that stuff. Yeah, it's not easy. But yeah, Kelsey documentary it was a pretty good one. It was really good. Yeah. Well, David, I think that was a awesome conversation. I appreciate your time. I appreciate. You know, every coming out here, talking football, talking the past, present, future, and mental health. And I'd like to thank Optum for having you as well. So thanks again, and best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.